Hello everyone, Warangel here, and welcome back to the new mass campaign for Mortal Empires. Now at the moment, our army is in the middle of a big road trip down to the east side of my empire, as we're about to attack the dwarves and eventually the Skaven over in the mountains. Now, it's going to take a couple of turns for our forces to get into position, even with them force marching. So, it's going to be a bit slow at the beginning, but hopefully we'll get into a fight once we actually get to Karak Zorn. Now, for the moment, we'll just need to get our troops moving. So Simides and Tutakarnet are the two that's heading down to, to Karakzorn. So as you can see, force marching all the way to Kasama. It's actually going to take how many turns? Uh, one, two, three, four turns to get to Kasama. And we're going to push forwards, I would say, just do straight to there. I'm not too fussed about going for Orion's camp. Sorry, Orion's camp. Just because it's not going to be that useful. As you can see there, we're just not going to get much benefit from taking the settlement. So I'm just quite happy to leave it as a wild, you know, wilderness, essentially, in the middle of, well, on the borders of my empire. So we'll leave them there. We'll have Ramatep. You're going to come down to Karak Zorn. Because one, he's going to scout out what's going on over here. But also, so he can actually go and damage the walls. So that way then it will make the siege much more easier anyway. Simbades, you've already moved. Tutakarnet, you can move down too. I see Intest needs to be leveled up, so we'll make sure to do that. Oh, you might as well just move in the end turn phase. Select. You finished having you. Yes. The Screaming Skull Catapult has been done. So, well, do we need to give you any more units? Can we give you any more units? Let's have a quick look. Could give you some Nehekan Warriors. Could give you some Tomb Guard. Hmm. To be fair, we haven't given you a really fancy melee unit yet. Yeah, let's... No, i tell you what we'll do. We'll leave you with this, and we'll have him switch over now to start force marching down towards Qatar. But, if you guys remember, I do have a spare lynch priest. Uh, what was his name? Fockton? The guy that was doing the... Ne Here he is, in fact. The guy that does Nehekara magic. So we'll have him come to join up then with... Selek. He'll get there eventually. But, yeah, all catch up. Now, Ramatep, basically that's all our characters moved. Right, let's upgrade Intess. What are we going to give you? T to be honest, I don't really know. We've done all your magic. Yeah, the only one we're missing is Light of Battle. i tell you what, let's go for one point in Light of Battle. And we're going to go for another one in the Canopic Jar Hoarder. Because I did see that we got 14 options of the Mortuary Cult, so I want to check out which ones we can get. So let's have a quick look. We can get one Legion of Legend. Uh, oh, the Storm Riders of Kassar. The Hekar and Horsemen. Hmm. I do feel tempted for these. What else can we get, though? Scribe Kapesh. Lampus Mace. Spear of Facts. Pact, I should say. Bones versus Larch, interesting. Blade, hang on. Did we not have marble? I could have swore we had a marble mine somewhere. Or did I get rid of it? <laughs> that wouldn't surprise me in the slightest. Ooh. We can get that eventually. Or we can get the Blade of Morning Fire. Flame and attacks, armor pierce and damage plus 15. Ooh. Now, I think I'm going to go for the Storm Riders of Kassar. So let's give that, and then we're going to give it to Tutankhamun, since he's our main cavalry commander at the moment. So if we grab you... Uh, let's just get rid of one of your normal horsemen at the moment. Switch that over to the Storm Riders. There we go. And then we'll be sorted. And we're not going to... No, we're not going to upgrade this, because I do want to get the Black Tower of Arkan settlement up to level 4, so we can actually get the Black Tower of Arkan. So we won't do that for the moment. Ready to book? We'll lift you up. And what do we want to get from here? Public order? I mean, public order is pretty okay at the moment. Uh, do do Let's go for Bone Shaper. It gives me more slots eventually. 
Okay, that's fine. Vulture Mountain, let's upgrade the mausoleum here. Alright. Let me have a quick look. I could have swore. Yeah, Springs of Eternal Life. Here we are. I remembered somewhere I had access to marble. But you're getting growth done. Ah, oh, because I knocked it down, didn't I? Uh, hmm. To be fair, let's cancel that. Let's knock it down. What? Yeah, we're gonna just leave it for now. We might as well just stick with the growth that we're gonna be having. Yeah, that will be fine. That will be fine. So, eventually we'll get access to marble in the next turn. I forgot that we actually got rid of that. There we go. So the war against the dwarves is not going to be a hard one. They've only got the one settlement. They may have one or two armies there, but with my two full stack armies, I'm sure it's not going to be a problem. The only thing I would like to try and do before we attack is, if you remember, we have started with the construction. I can't remember, was it up in El Kabad? Well, oh, no, that's El Calabad. Christ, what is it? The name of the this province, region here. El Haq. There we go. I believe it was there that we actually started construction on the Tomb Scorpion building that would allow me to get a Tomb Scorpion, which would be a very, very nice little bit to have. And, oh my god, the dwarves have confederated with Barak Var. The Greenskins and Vampire Counts have gone military alliance. Ooh, heading up north is going to be fun, ain't it? <laughs> and we're going to have to face the might of the Dwarf Empire. It's actually nice to see that the dwarves hanging on in there. If I remember right, wasn't it in the Batonian campaign that we fought that the Greenskins basically eliminated the Dwarves completely? Like, I think I was in the mid process, if I continued that campaign much longer, to actually march down south in order to try in into the mountains to try and rescue them. But luckily we didn't have to do that because of like the end of the campaign. But it's nice to see the Dwarves switching them over. I know some other people always have the issue of, oh, they always get dominated. The Dwarves by the Greenskins. Never had that with me. It's more 50-50 from when I've done campaigns. Anyway, Builder for Select. That's good to see. Ramatep Leech Priest. You got injured, did you? Oh, I forgot about that. Alright. Uh, who were you with? You were with Select, weren't you? No. Were you with Select? No, you were with Simidus. He's now got a 20 stack. Oh, right. Uh, let's get rid of you. Right. Ramatep, let's get you back with your king. So you can start marching your way down there. It will take a few turns, but that's fine. He's got plenty of time to get his button down there. Alright, Tutakana, did you not move? I could have swore I've asked you to move down here. Get down. Right. There we go. You get your giant war sphinx moving. Alright. Simides. I'll tell you what. Let's just get you guys marching down here. The characters can chase after them. As long as they get them roughly in the same area, that's what I really need to worry myself about. So Ramatep, you're going to come down towards Kasabar yourself. There, right. Ramatep, you're already moving away down. To Takarnat, you've moved. Select, you can continue on your journey. Towards Qatar. Fokton, you are now going to start making your way towards Qatar yourself. Like that. There we go. And Ramatep, you're done. Okay. Let's upgrade this. Oh yeah, that was something I wanted to check out because we can actually build a pyramid here at Zandri and I haven't checked it out yet. Uh, here it is. The Pyramid of King Amenemhetum. The King of the Fleetport is forever immortalized by his colossal pyramid. So we get a few jars, public order, income from trade and additional trade resources produced. That will be handy. Hmm. Interesting. 
Shadow Gores. Oh yeah, I forgot the beastmen are about. Right, now we've built this. There we go. Right, now we're gonna get access to marble. Ah, <sighs> forgot that I didn't get that. Right. Oh yeah, did this get built? It did. So now we got access to zombie dragons and bone giants. Excellent. Now, did I have anywhere else that was making salt? That was a question I wanted to find out. Uh, probably not. The reason being is that since it's one of the few tier 4 settlements I had, I was wondering if we could potentially get the citadel that we need in order to do one of the rituals. This one here. But, hell, we can always get that at New Mass once it's built. Uh, the other thing I did want to check. Yes, we finished our Tomb Scorpion. We can get two Tomb Scorpions as well. Hmm. Maybe add an add to your army. Something to think about. Alright, and yeah, sure, we'll upgrade you. Alright, no, that's cancelled actually. Alright, let's skip through all of this. The reason being is that next turn we're going to be able to start the buildings in New Mass. So that's Tutankhamun's actual pyramid that we're finally going to be renovating after all this time. I bet it's bother him a little bit that we've had to renovate all these other kings' pyramids and leave his to last. Pretty much. But hey, better late than never. So he's gonna get his pyramid back. We'll get one of those citadels as well, just for the bonuses that will give me. And then, otherwise, we'll start focusing then on getting up to tier 5 so we can get access to our bigger constructs. So, you know, the Hero Titan, the War Sphinx, the Necro Sphinx, and so on. That would be quite nice. I haven't actually got to experience a Hero Titan before. I think you can get that as a starting one though, can't you, for one of the the Tomb King Legendary Lords? I can't remember which one it is. But yeah, I think you can, I just never played with it myself. So that's going to be interesting. I mean it looks cool when I saw it in its introductory video with its you know, laser beam eyes, it's like Superman but t taller. <laughs> hmm. I have got the orcs have taken over the border princes. Everyone has done extremely. The dwarves? Hang on. The dwarves have taken the board... eastern border princes. <laughs> this is something I do like about Warhammer is that with mortal empires. People can just be absolutely crazy. You see factions conquering all sorts of areas. It's really fun to watch sometimes. I right, thank you, Sharka, for going through those injuries yet again. Right, let's have a look. So we can do this one to get Giant Bow Shapti. We can upgrade this to get Necros, Necro, Necropolis Knights. Thank you very much. And let's get our pyramid done first of all, just because now we've got the building slots available. Let's get a Nehekaran. To be honest, it's not really that big a deal. I mean, it's useful when you're inside the settlement, but that's about it. So, could go for another one of these, but let me just check that ritual. Is it worth it? Extra growth for 10 turns. That's extra 300 growth, right? For all provinces. Extra 10 jars. 25% cheaper construction time, and everyone gets tomb swarms. I suppose it will be handy. Uh, fine, we'll get one. Right, let's pop on here. I mean, the other thing, of course, is we do need to get walls for here. Like, we haven't got any anything but the basic defenses for our capital. Yeah, we're going to go for defences. We'll upgrade though to get the Necro Serpent Nest. There we go. And, but there we go, we've managed to get a nice new statue to play with. Now we're going to switch over to... The Warshaper Petra. This is going to give our characters and armies just a nice little boost for the end turn bit. Uh, you're moving down towards here. So start moving.
Alright, everyone is moving where they should be. Let's head off. Like I said guys, I know this is not the most exciting uh, gameplay in the world, watching these armies just march across the map. It is one of those things, if it, there is something to be said about somewhat edited gameplay, it's like, I have to be honest, I don't really like them, that's why I, I do these videos my in particular way, is that apart from doing something like a narrative let's play or something, I don't really like watching ed heavily edited videos. There's a couple of exceptions, I would say, but generally I don't, and what really bothers me when I watch some edited videos is that the ones that are really, really edited, you know, as in they got so many cuts in them, it's unbelievable. I remember watching uh, one YouTuber, it was a, I can't remember her, her name, but she was doing Elder Scrolls, you know, a Skyrim, and she had a face cam in the bottom of the screen, I remember, and I just remember watching it, a video of hers, because I thought, oh, I knew Skyrim, I was going through a phase of trying to find good Skyrim videos, and I remember her cuts being so often that in the same conversation, she was cutting stuff out in the same sentence in almost. Like, as soon as one sentence was, like, the character had finished talking, it cut then between the character finished talking and her picking her option. And it was just seemed so disconcerting. And I don't know some YouTubers are quite happy to do that, but I don't. I just like Streamer Fort. It's one of the reasons, like, the YouTubers I do like are very much the same ilk. So, people like XP Gamers, Wycon Roleplays. I think the only exception to it is really officially Devin, thinking about it. Huh. Oh yeah, and suppose World 1D2 Gamer at the moment. But I don't know, I think his Let's Plays are entertaining enough that I can put up with it, and there's not that many edits. Sorry, I just got a bit of a random thought. I was thinking it about, uh, you know, this, this sort of stuff I have to admit may not be the most interesting things. It's a relevant part of the campaign, we need to do this in order to move to the next part. But for a YouTube video, I suppose people are interested in just like engagement in, you know, loads and loads of drama and stuff. So they're just watching armies march across the map. But hey ho, one of those things. Right, Clan Ungrand are now allied with the Dwarves. I wonder how long it's going to be into one of these confederate with the other. Alright, Ramatep. Yeah, continue on your way down to Karak Zorn. We're going to have you start to damage the walls, I think. In fact, what's your chances? 80%. That's fine by me. You can do that. Uh, okay, let's not... Let's go for the World Barracks. And we already got that. Let's just go for the extra public order. There we go. Use up all the money, why don't I? Right. Ramatep's moving down. What I think I might do is, with Tutankhamun, once we get him into position down here, I'm thinking just let him stay a couple of turns so we can get that Tomb Scorpion. May get rid of one of the units and maybe one of the Skeleton Warriors. Replace them instead with a Tomb Scorpion, I think is a much better choice. Could do it with Simides, but at the same time we're going to be putting in uh, Ramatep. I suppose we could always just get rid of one of these units. Yeah. Let's have a quick look. Pop on to here a minute. How much do I need to go in order to get into Entombed Beneath the Sands? 50%. So let's find a 50% movement. Okay, say here. By the springs of an, uh, an arc square. Might as well just stick you in there. Right, let's have a quick look. Tomb Scorpions. Four turns. And we can get access to three of them. Oh. I wonder if that's because of, um, oh, what's his name? Think about the visionary, Ramatep. I kind of want to get one. I think I am going to get one. For, not for him, no. But it's just so I have an idea what to expect. How much is it for a horde of skelly warriors again? Because that's the thing, I mean, on the one hand, these guys are quite experienced, but on the other hand, you can get nice big units of 180 compared to 120. No matter, I just wanted to see what it was like. So, 
let's you continue on your march down. To Takana, next turn we're going to get you a nice shiny new scorpion to play with. So, we'll make, yeah, make sure to do that. So Lack, you can continue marching towards Qatar. Now remember that we do have a few more turns, five more turns, of this uh, debuff. So what was suggested is that we could do something like with Select here, just go into the, you know, apparently ruined province where nothing is going on, honest, and just uh, raid the settlement, the province, get some extra money into the bank, you know? Right, Fogdom, you can continue over here, that's be great. Rahotep, yep, you'll continue marching down here. It's going to take a little while for you to join up though, isn't it? No way, it's one of those things. Hmm. I have to be thinking, I am wondering about what I should be doing for the next campaign. I mean, it's still early days in this. We've still got a whole bunch of conquering left to do before we can continue consider this campaign at an end. So don't worry, this campaign is not going to be finishing anytime soon. Oh, what do you want, can we? Apparently we become more powerful than you. You want a military alliance? Uh, hang on, do we have defensive? We do not... But we do want to conquer you. Nope. I'm quite happy just to leave it as it is. I was considering defensive. But the problem is, if we want to keep our reliability up, we're going to, of course, have to cancel our agreements over a period of time. And going for an alliance is just one extra one then. Whether it's defensive or military. This is going to be an extra cut few turns we're going to have to wait. And since we are relying a bit on trade and now for income, it's a good idea for us to try to avoid doing that if possible. Hi. Right. And according to this, it's only taken nearly two thirds of the episode, but we're now in a position where we can be close to Carrick Zorn. So in like two turns from now, the next turn and the turn after that, we'll be able to attack them with King Selec. Ramatep's nearby. We've actually encountered the Court of Labaris. What about to you in the Mortal Empires campaign? Because remember, this is the faction that's led by uh, the High Queen Kalida, who happens to be over, like, in uh, Lustria. But what about to you at the moment in the Mortal Empires? Oh, right, you're over in Lamia. That makes a lot more sense. I suppose, oh, yeah, because this doesn't actually feature, doesn't it, this side properly in the Vortex campaign? Yeah, that makes sense. Right, uh, yeah, no, we'll keep you force marching for the moment. I didn't realize we still got a little bit of a way to go. Uh, did it just say it was going to give me attrition here? No, it's just passing through enemy friendly territory. Gotcha. Right. Ramatep, let's get you down here. Yeah, you're going to damage the walls. You can level up. In that case, I'm going to give you more damage walls ability. And... Do, 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 do. Don't have to worry about giving you any of these. Yet. Anyway. Yeah, let's just go for an extra bit of damage walls. Three additional wall breaches. Nothing to sneer at. We'll just let you go off and do that. Simides, you're moving there. I'm at up, you've moved. Select. Oh, hello. King Rahobi. Alright, welcome to my lands. I hope you'll get comfortable, just not too comfortable, may I say. Alright, let's upgrade this so we can get access to more Yushapti and the ones with the giant bows. Alright, you're going to continue making your way over towards here, Fokton. Wahotep, continue marching down like you are. Simides is there. Alright, Tutakarnet, let's move you into the Springs of Eternal Life. I'm going to disband. Do I want to? Who do I want to disband? Let's get rid of one of these skelly warriors, because if I had to pick between skeleton warriors and a tomb scorpion, I'm definitely picking a tomb scorpion. 
facts. Hmm. I know these guys are experienced, but let's get rid of you. In fact, let's get rid of both of you, because what I'm thinking, let's get you, you, and you. There we go. Just figured, what the hell, we might as well go for Tomb Guard. He is our faction leader after all. I think it makes sense that he gets the shiny bodyguards. Alright. Let's go to Diplomacy and speak to the Court of Labaris. Hmm. What would you have of me? They are quite willing to do anything that we want, basically. They're not willing to confederate. They're actually quite powerful. Huh. Well, I'm not going to get anything from them, because at the moment I do want to see if I'm conquering them at some point. They've got ten settlements. Hang on. Let's have a quick look. Did they wipe... They've wiped out the last defenders. They've... Oh, that's going to be fun. <laughs> oh, we're going to have to face more Tomb Kings, aren't we? Yes, indeed. Alright, well, I think it's a good idea then that we stock up on some constructs, if that's going to be happening. Right. I was hoping that we were going to be able to face Krokgar, right, and the last defenders. I thought that would have been pretty cool. I would have liked to try and take on the Silver Throne as well, so we can actually face some vampire accounts. And in particular, um, Nef Nefuata, or whatever her name was, the, the Queen of Vampires, and the head of the Lamia bloodline. But, unfortunately, it doesn't look like that's going to happen, is it? Oh well, it's one of those things. But on the plus side, it means that we just got one enemy to think. If we can actually wipe out some of our armies in quick succession, we can be able to make sure that we can take them on without, and weaken them really, really quickly then. Instead of having to deal with multiple small factions, but that's a shame, because I would have liked to try and face Quokgar and the Lizardmen in combat. You haven't faced those since we dealt with Talakwa and Tic-Tac-Toe in that very easy fight. You remember that a few episodes ago? I think uh, the Followers and Agash gave us a bit of a challenge, off uh, my memory. But the worst thing, I guess, <laughs> is yet again, we're going to be facing more... Tomb Kings. I mean, Christ, this is what Cetra must have feel, felt during the Second Awakening. So, what happened in the lore of, but basically, is, you know, after Nagash's great spell that was supposed to wake up all the dead, it woke up the Tomb Kings, and that's why they were one dead. But, um, yeah, he, Cetra then went around and basically conquered everyone, so, like, sh shut up, I'm the king, you listen to me. And I imagine this is what Cetra must have felt like, like, just marching around all the time. Oh, damn it. If we only, only hang on for a couple more turns, we could have declared war on them and got, what was this? Plus 10 leadership, 500 treasury, and 20 more jars. No matter. Pyre feats of Sartosa. I wonder what happens if you actually conquered Sartosa. Would you ever get this? Hmm. Just wondered. Right. Okay, so it looks like the attack on Karak Zorn is going to be happening in the next episode now. Oh, Jesus Christ, that's a big stack of armies. And you're heading down here to attack. Interesting. I mean, it's not too good for you in terms of the attrition, but interesting. Right. Well, let's have some fun with them in the meantime. So, come over to their borders. And, oh, we can't raid, can we? Oh no, it's need 50%. Damn it. If only we didn't move as far, I should have just moved right to the border there. Add in my head, it was 25%. But that's fine. That's fine. Alright, but we need to go after these. Are you guys at war? You have my attention. With them. You are. That? What? Hang on. Did you just call me mortal? Kalida, did you just call to King to Takarnet a mortal? I think you need your eyes checked. Obviously, that vampire corruption has um, addled your brain somewhat, if you think that. 
Alright, so we've still got a couple of turns before we deal with that then. Um, which one's inside the settlement? This army is the one outside. Okay. Simides, have you got lightning strike? Is my next question for you. You do. Okay. Oh, in that case, we might as well just push forward into their territory. Alright, Lord not moved. Select. Okay, let's move you into, you know, this ruined territory of which we have no idea if anyone's here. And let's start... Apparently we're not going to get any money from this. Interesting. What happens if we did this? We'll spend a thousand gold to pull this off. Oh, there we go. Now all of a sudden we get 322. Oh, this game sometimes. So, it's an interesting mechanic, though. And I suppose you could see the lore behind it, in the sense that, when you think about it, you don't know Skaven are there, so you're not going to actually raid anything important to the Skaven because you don't know they're there. But then when you do know they're there, next minute, like, bam, you all of a sudden you're interested, and you can target their armies and their supplies and stuff like that. That makes kind of sense, when you think about it in that sort of light. Ah, that's nearly done. Okay. Let's look with that for some more money. Still saving out on that. Xandri, two more turns. And then we can get you the nice shiny new pyramid here too. Um, go for... I suppose we can spend the money to upgrade that. Sure. Alright. Sharka. Still a few more turns before we can give you immortality. But is there anything else we can give you in terms of fighting? Over my dead body? Interesting one. Skeletal chariot or skeletal steed? Oh no, he's the infantry commander. We don't want to get him on foot then. Let's just increase over my dead body and give you devastating charge then. Oh, that actually gives you... 6% bonus as well. Oh, that's what the second level does. Okay. Alright, who else? Prince Kagaturf. Let's give you another point in Blade Master. Which army are you with? Um, Selex. Okay, let's give you a Skeletal Steed as well. You know, if you ride him with his army, the least you can do is eh, get do that. There we go. We now got a few jars as well. Let's go for let's get a shiny new weapon. Blade of Morning Fire. I think we'll make a nice addition for one of our characters. Could go for that eventually when we we'll get Obsidian, which we'll get actually from taking Karak Orand. What's this? The hunger. Oh. Blade of Ata Antahak gives us regeneration. Crafter. Crafter. Alright, let's give this to a combat character. Let's give this to, I'm thinking... Let's give you to Simidus. Simidus got a magical weapon, he does not. Congratulations, you've got a new shiny blade. There we go. Alright, let's end the turn. And with this, it's going to be the end of the episode. So it didn't turn out to be the most thrilling one, I admit. It, these things do have to happen. You do need to get through and move armies around. Maybe it'll be something to look at for future campaigns to maybe try and do them a little bit more edited. It depends on what we're going to do. And I do have some ideas for... Because I like real life stuff that's going to be happening for me. and um, Well, potentially happen for me. I'm going to have to look that. I'm not going to have as much time if, uh, perhaps to be actually doing episodes. And maybe not so much time, but the inability to upload... Is probably the best way of doing it. But I will sort of have to talk about those plans when I actually know for certain if they're going to happen. But if that's the case, then I'm going to have to look into doing something a little bit more quality over quantity, which is not what I uh, or YouTube likes ideally. But I hope you guys will appreciate it. We'll have to wait and see. I mean, this is all just what ifs at the moment. 
but I'll happily talk about those in like an update video when I actually know what's going to be happening and what I would like to try and do with the channel and stuff like that. There is a idea I'd like to do, which is to go back and look at some of the older games. Sort of a let's we play, I guess is a good way of describing it. A chance to revisit some of the older games that I liked growing up. So it's just to check to see whether or not they pass the, you know, rose tinted lenses sort of l approach. You know when you look back and you think, oh, that great was a great game, and then you play it, and it's like, no, it really wasn't. But I would like to try some of them out, like Splinter Cell, and, you know, games that I grew up really, really enjoying as a kid. And just uh, doing a little separate thing on that, but I don't know if it will be the most appealing things for some of you guys. It may be, it may not. We'll have to wait and see. But, hey-ho, that's the end of today's episode. So thank you very much for watching, everyone. I hope you all enjoyed, and I hope you join me next time for more Warhammer 2. But until then, everyone, take care, and goodbye for now.